Today we're going to talk about the market crash of 2022. And you might be wondering, what market crash of 2022? Well, at the end of last year, we saw thumbnail after thumbnail and video after video suggesting that this huge market crash was going to come at the end of last year. So in this video, we're going to talk about what actually did happen and what we can expect to happen in 2023 so we can make really strong, intelligent decisions about how to move forward in regards to buying or selling a house in this upcoming year. But before we do that, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. A lot goes into these videos, a lot of time and effort, and it will really motivate me to do more of this stuff. Okay, without other way, let's talk about it. Now I'm in the state of Florida, primarily in Palm Beach and Broward counties. And yes, inventory did rise and the number of closings were down. As a matter of fact, closings were down for single family homes at 18% over 2021. And with condos and townhomes, they were down 21.7%. Here's the thing though, prices still went up. Home prices for single family homes in Florida in 2022 went up 15.7% over 2021. And with townhomes and condos, it increased 21.6%. So despite the decrease in sales and despite the increase in inventory, prices still rose and sellers got on average 100% of their asking price for single family homes or for condos and townhomes, 99.9%. In Palm Beach and Broward counties where the Homes by Koozie team, the team that I'm on, sellers on average got 95% of their asking price. So despite the headwinds from high inflation and high mortgage rates, the market remained strong. Buyers had more homes to choose from with increased inventory and sellers still got the price that they wanted. In essence, the market adjusted to be a more fair market because as we know, it was a heavily favored seller's market during the pandemic. But what about home values in the United States as a whole? What happened there? Well, if you take a look here from July to October, these respectable economists and data sources show that the depreciation peaked in August and declined ever since. In other words, where's the crash? It never crashed, it just adjusted. But what do I mean by it adjusted? Well, during the pandemic, home prices rose this much. Compare this to home house trends since basically forever, and we can reasonably conclude that of course there will be an adjustment, but not a crash. And as I mentioned in the last update, if we take even the most bearish of the respectable economist numbers and decline by 5.1%, we would still be above the trend line as prices rose 33% over the last two years. To put this in perspective, home prices rose roughly 2.01% year over year since 1975. Yet we rose on average 16.5% each of the last two years. Again, solidifying the point that even if we decline by 5.1%, we are still way ahead of the curve. And when it comes to Florida, it's likely never gonna crash. And here's a few reasons why. Let's start off with the Florida Realtors Chief Economist, Dr. Brad O'Connor, who suggests that with a potential decrease in mortgage rates, Florida can be an even more appealing place for home buyers in the future. Lawrence Yoon, the National Association of Realtors Chief Economist, he noted the current conditions and he said this. He said the upcoming months should see a return of buyers as mortgage rates appear to have already peaked and have been coming down since mid-November. And guess what? It already started in the beginning of January, the week over week increase in mortgage applications have increased 27.9%. And it's likely to continue as the selling season approaches. And this next reason we're gonna talk about something that not a lot of people talk about, but it's important and it's the spread. And you're probably like, well, what's the spread? Well, the spread is the gap between the 10 year treasury yield and the mortgage rates. Historically, mortgage rates has been anchored or tied to the 10 year treasury yield. The spread has been from the 10 year treasury yield to the mortgage rates around 1.79%. However, during the past year, that spread has been a percentage point higher, around 2.79%. And don't believe me? Well, let's take a random date. Let's say October 13th of last year, 2022. The mortgage rates were around 6.92%. And during the same time, the 10-year treasury yield was 3.95%. So we take 6.92 minus 3.95, and voila, you have a spread of 2.97, much higher than the norm. And now if you take a look at this graph, now we can see that the 10-year treasury yield is trending down. And of course, the mortgage rates are following, but what about that spread? Well, as of January 28th, the rates were 6.15% while the 10 year treasury yield was 3.44%, again, making the spread about 1% higher than normal. So what I'm getting at here, if the mortgage rates and the yield continue to decline, much to the wisdom of many economists, the mortgage rates will further decline when the spread adjusts back to quote unquote normal. And why do I think the spread's gonna go back to normal? Well, it's just history, my friends. History repeats itself. And if you take a look here, you'll notice the spread from 2004 to about today. It usually increases during economic turbulence, such as recessions, in our case, pandemics and inflation, 
Some people argue that we had a recession. And now with the US economy appearing to be on the rebound, with the economy growing two months in a row despite two months of previous decline, this indicates future positive trends. And we also have the US inflation rate currently declining for the seventh straight month in a row. Unemployment rates are at a healthy low at 3.5%. And finally, gas prices have also been steadily trending down, indicating that everything's going in a positive direction, which in turn, I suspect, will reduce the yield and again, in turn, reduce the interest rates. And when that happens, the buyers are gonna be back once again. And on a side note, it's already, we're already seeing it happening in real time right here in Southeast Florida. Just yesterday, we went on a contract for over $1.5 million on a property that had a multiple cash offer scenario in Parkland, Florida. Further, Lee Montgomery on our team, he is working five buyers now and have made multiple offers over the course of the last Goodbye. few days. He's constantly getting beat out and outbid by others. So in real world times, we are also seeing it live too. And you're probably like, okay, that's great. And you might be wondering, well, in my situation, Chris, I if I'm buying or if I'm selling, what should I? I do. Now, my little disclaimer I always put out there, there's no crystal ball. There's no way for me to predict the future. I simply use information that is at my hands and I listen to people who are extremely intelligent in these matters. And then I form conclusions from that and relay those to you. With that out of the way, if I were buying a home right now, I would say, great, you can buy a home. The prices aren't gonna fluctuate all that much. It's not a bad time to buy. However, I do suspect that the interest rates will be declining soon. So if that is something that worries you, you have a couple of options. You can buy now and just refinance later on. You can do what's called a 2-1 buy down program. You can talk to your mortgage lender about that, but basically in a nutshell, you get to pay down your mortgage rate for a couple years and refinance it. The mortgage rates eventually decline. Or if you don't really absolutely need to sell, maybe just wait a little bit. That's totally up to you. Now, if I were a seller, we have to come to terms that A, it is not July of 2021 anymore. We're not going to have lines and rows and rows and rows of people banging down the door, waving appraisal inspection contingencies. In some circumstances, that might occur, but not in most. If we we're going to be aggressive in this market, we have to understand that buyers do have more options now and they're not making offers as quickly as they were before. So if we wanted to be really intelligent about it, we have to make our property a hot commodity. And that comes in terms of condition, price, and marketing, which the Homes by Cozy team does really, really well. So if you want to discuss buying or selling a home and you're in the Southeast market, or if, you have, if you're a real estate agent and you have a client move into the area and you want to send away, by all means, we will love to have a conversation with you and them. So just give us a call anytime and we'll love to chat about it. And with that, please don't forget to subscribe to like this channel. I hope this information served you well and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye. That's my Roomba. Just waiting for my Roomba. middle of the video.